all of a sudden, like four o'clock in the morning, I hear like, dong, 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 dong. something's going on with the van. Somebody, they're lifting it up. They're towing it. So I jump out of the van and I run out to the guy. I'm like, yo, that had dropped the van, right? And the guy just <laughs> it's a clown in boxers. <laughs> Jim Brewer. 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 Hey, what's up, everyone? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good, man. How you doing? I'm doing very good. I'm doing very good. I'm ready to have some fun. So you remember our little trip to uh, to Texas? Wait, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on a second. I got, I got it. Oh, there we go. It's Crown you know, Fox Habitat hat. Ah, I should have worn my Crown Fox shirt. Damn, Damn it! And I should have worn my cowboy hat. Ah. Damn it! Missed opportunity. Um, if you haven't, well, I don't think it's really open to the public. Oh, we'll find out. One of the best times we had the stories from this guy. I just, I don't, I don't even know where to start with him. But please, uh, bring on Dino Jones, a Joe Sib. What's up, Dino? A sibling? Is that what I am? <laughs> I was gonna say you're a Joe Sib sibling. Uh, I'm an associate of Joe sibling. Yeah, he sold you hard. You know, Joe's like, dude, bro, dude, Tony, no. We're dialed in. We're dialed in. This guy, Dino, let me tell you, this guy, you're going to love Dino. He's like my, he's like your gene. You know how you have your friend Gene? This this is your gene. He's like, bro, Tony. I'm like, all right, stop trying to sell me this Dino. Right. I got it. Whatever. Um, but no, 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 you definitely, you didn't fall short whatsoever man how you been i've been great man just uh it's been raining a lot since you guys left so we've been well you know we like the rain here if you get rain here we love it because we don't get enough of austin it. texas yeah for everyone who don't know you're in austin texas and uh what is the place that you know are you open to the public yet is your place open to the up you know I, it's been kind it's kind of new i just started building these cabins and and you know that's what everybody asks me are you gonna do airbnb and it's like no nah, i'm not gonna do airbnb i just it's like the way you came out, you know, I like having just okay. minded people, but you know, we have people yep. come out and rent the cabins and, and stuff. Okay. Do workshops and parties, a lot of private parties out there. Yeah. So Dino comes, we go to Dino's place in Austin, Texas. And I, I felt like I was on a movie set, to be honest with you. And I had no clue that you work on right. movie set. Right. Right. Zero clue. <laughs> the first thing I see is like this, this, this bar outside that looks like it's an old Western bar, like just like a saloon. You go up. This is where people have been shot here. They've been taken away and thrown into the prison for the night. Um, and then you had, you had, so you had a store right. with all the stuff with the greatest candy, wal walnuts or pecans? pecans? Pecans. Yeah. Yeah. We got pecans. Candy pecans. pecans. Everybody around me. I don't know if you saw, we're surrounded by pecan farms. So yes, I saw that. I saw that area. Yeah. Yeah. So the last time I saw you was at the show in Austin. Uh, I didn't have a whole, I, I apologize. I didn't have a lot of time to hang out. That uh, you know, you're doing your thing. It was great. You know, I got it. You know, you had a great show too, by the way, that place was packed. Packed. Yeah, thank you God. An ovation. When you walked out, you should have just said, thank you. Good night. <laughs> I forgot. All right. I, said, <laughs> I, for, I forgot about that. I completely yeah, forgot I about that. I, that's the night the cowboy hat. I came yeah. out the cowboy hat. Yeah, they loved it. They were super stoked to see you guys. And um, yeah, there was a lot of. We got to do something for our buddy Joe. He's. Yeah. Uh, I'm he not sure. Texted me. Did you do the show? Did you? I said, like, dude, I'm wait. I'm waiting to go on the show. He's, Text me when you're done. I want to hear how it goes. <laughs> should we bring him in, Mike? Should we bring in Joe? You want to you want to get him on the horn? Yeah, try to get him on the horn. All right, hold on a second. Talk amongst Joe, yourselves. I I Talk really amongst. think I, I you're the first after hanging out with you. It was like the first time that I actually wanted to start writing films again. Uh -huh. <laughs> Writing even, even right before you, I I, I Ira Dean, who I got to get on the show. I think Ira Dean. And you may have 
perhaps one of the the funniest stories of adventures of of band life that I that I think I've ever heard in my life. You you were going to um you you were going to the sh- uh, work on the movie set. Yeah, right? yeah. And you were you were off to work on the movie set and then while you were there Joe goes, "Dude, dude, bro." And he's he's talking he's talking to you uh, wife Sarah. He's going, "Dude, bro, did did he talk about the clown when he was in a band?" I went, "What?" <laughs> cuz bro, he's the he dude, he's a great singer. He he cry, he's he's a front man. I went, Dino's a singer? He goes, yeah, dude, bro, bro, dude. He used to go out there and he used to, he used to wear clown makeup before <laughs> yeah. it was even a thing. Like, I'm like what? What yeah. happened? Well, so we go this whole You know, we gave it you, uh, you know what it was? We watched Shakes the Clown back in like 94. We were putting this band together, me and the drummer. And you know, when you're in New York, you want to do theatrical things. You know, we were just sitting around in our crappy little apartment and we watched Shakes the Clown. And I looked at him, I was like, dude we got to dress like clowns. And he was like, (laughs) (laughs) and that opening scene where it starts with someone's peeing on Bobcat's head. (laughs) I was like, we got to be clowns. And really that was kind of where we just took it from there. And it was kind of a kiss thing. You know, we had pyrotechnics and we just went with it. And, you know, and you just kind of, you know, once you start, you can't stop being a clown. It's like, you know, we, you know, (laughs) many years later, but it, it wasn't the same thing, you know. All right, so what what is your life? What, how did how do you and Joe Sib connect? How how, how did that connect? During that, how's that start? It was people used to say we were kind of like the he was like the we were like I was the East Coast version of him. He was the West Coast version of me because we were both in punk rock bands, and he was coming out to New York in the mid nineties. And you know, we just we all both of our bands had that sort of enthusiasm. We were booking our own tours and doing shit like that, and and uh, you know, we just became good friends. And we started doing so. You did, so you didn't really know each other. No, you just heard one another. That. You were both, you were trying to do a punk rock. What's your punk rock band at that, that time? That was it. Clowns for Progress. That was the band I was in, and and you know we wore clown makeup and we played kind of rockabilly punk and and uh, you know pompadour. We we found all these old tuxedos in a vintage tuxedo store, so we wore those and had like pompadours and shit and. Yeah, we're just we were just you know <laughs> goofing. How long does that last? How long does that last? Uh, you know, like six years, I guess. Right till right up till about two thousand, and then we just sort of you know, it just sort of started splitting off. Guys are getting married and blah blah blah, and you know. But um, yeah, I can't keep it. And were you guys try? So you, all right. So when you start the punk band, all right, because we're all kind of the same age, yeah, yeah. right? You're fit. F- like I'm 50s, in the fifties. So we all start, you know, I'm, I'm the Senate live. Year. We're all going after our thing in the mid nineties. Right. Right. You, the, is that the first thing you did? What, what brings uh, you know what's to funny the in the mid nineties, in the mid nineties, I actually, I had like a Lauren Michaels story. I thought of that after you were out there because right about the time you're on Saturday night live and we don't know each yeah. other. I yeah. was working for art movers when I, you know, to just, you know, make money, make money. And uh, yeah, and I worked for these decorators and we used to do Lauren's house all the time. His wife, we'd take stuff up there and and uh, Allison, right? His wife's I, name was Allison. I never knew her name. name. You know, I would just show up there, but I'm in their apartment, right? I'm in there. It's an old pre-war building. He's got like a, I mean, dude, this is like 25 years ago. And is that in the Hamptons or something, right? Oh, no, is it's it in New York like City. That? It's in New York City. Oh, and, yes, uh, yes, yes. And yes, I come okay. up the service elevator. I'm in the back. He's got a housekeeper. She's like from Guyana or something. And she hands me a baby. So whoever Lauren's kid is, who's about 33 years old, he ha- they hand me a kid. And I'm just a dude. <laughs> they hand me the kid. <laughs> and I say to her, I'm like, is Lauren going to be here? And she's like, yeah, he's on his way. So I'm holding the kid. And I'm a psychopath. I, and I don't do stand up. I don't do anything. I'm just like, all right, this is it. I'm doing my audition. I'm going to be fired when he shows up and I had nothing. I had, I was like, well, I do impressions. I'm going to go from like a Scottish accent to an Irish accent to a yeah, to audition, and he's going to hire me on the spot. I'm like, yeah, that's it. I'll be in. I'll be fired or he won't like it. And so. How you doing, Lon Michaels? Yeah, oh, good to say, see oh, you right? baby. Oh, you f***ing head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, but 
thankfully the wife and I didn't, I never knew her name. His wife shows up and I was like, Hey, uh, is Lauren going to be here? She's like, no, Lauren's not coming. Okay. Let's hang We had chandeliers and shit. so I was like, Oh, okay. That's it. End of that fantasy delusion. <laughs> Oh my God, it's freaking hilarious. Like you're just, you're sitting there just putting up chandeliers like, I'm going to be on Sunday Live by the time this chandelier is up and <laughs> done. I'll tell you that right now. I'm like, I'm you know, you're like 22 home. or you think, when else am I going to have Lauren Michaels right here in front of me? <laughs> and so you never even got to see him though? No, nah, I never saw him. We, ah. we never did. But that it was because the housekeeper said, yeah, Lauren's on his way. I was just like, okay. Game Did on. you know it was his house going into Oh, it? yeah, for sure. For sure his house. Okay. Yeah. okay. We had a okay. lot of high-end clients. All these, you know, decorators. We'd go and play stuff. It was a classic move. They were having a party. We'd come and hang a chandelier, put a bunch of stuff in. We'd come pick it up a couple days later. But the game is that, like, they buy a couple pieces. $13,000 sconce and blah, blah. So the decorators don't mind giving them a bunch of stuff for the party, and we just do the work and, you know. Got you. We used to so now, I was in that Midler's house. Everybody, you know, a lot of these decorators are all doing all these places. So, you know, I gave Bette Midler's yeah. kid our C, our single. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, like, hello. Hey, who's that, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Joe Sitch. Hey. Dude, what's are you up? defending the game right now? Yeah, we're on here. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God, I love it. Dino Jones. Punkist. Well, Joe, we were talking about Dino was telling me uh, that he was in Lauren Michaels house. Yeah. Which we didn't. What? Which. Yeah. Do, you didn't hear this story. I've never heard that never, story. Maybe I never told you that one. I don't know. You know, the thing is, in what New were York, you doing? You'd, you know, you'd run into all the, you know, you'd run into people all the time and you tried to just, you know, brush it off. It's like, you know, like I think one of the one of the really one of the best celebrity stories I think I've ever had is uh, Lawrence Fishburne came into the bar I was working at. Right. And he came, I was opening up at like four o'clock in the afternoon and he comes in with this guy, Dominic, who he's a uh, junior from the Sopranos. It's his actual biological son. This guy's an actor. He's like Dominic, whatever, junior. And that guy came in the bar all yeah. the time. So he comes in with Lawrence Fishburne. There's nobody in the bar. Lawrence Fishburne isn't looking at me. He just sits down and Dominic orders a couple drinks. And so I go over and I lock the door because I'm going to let him just have the place for a little while, you know, just be cool. And so I take the drinks over and I set them down and Lawrence looks up like he's going to pay me, which was really nice because a lot of these celebrities always thought they're going to get a free drink. And he, he reaches for his wallet and I said, oh, no, that's for Apocalypse Now. And he goes, oh, <laughs> what's your name? And I was like, Dino. He goes, call me Fish. And he, and he shakes my hand and I was like, oh, <laughs> so, I, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, right? They order another round. So when I come back. I'm like, that one's for boys in the hood. He's like, hey, right? But now I don't have a, dude, there's no cell phones, right? I was just going to say, you can't sit there and Google all the movies he's in. You're really pulling out the real is, deal here. Yeah, yeah. This is, you know, this is pre-Matrix John Wick. This is like 95. <laughs> and I knew yes. he'd done a movie recently. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to screw this up because I'm going to pull like a Denzel movie or something. And he's going to be like, oh, dude, you know, tilt. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm thinking, and I'm like, oh, what am I? And the only thing I could think of is that he played like Cowboy Carl on the on Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, damn. <laughs> but I'm like, but what if this dude is not into that? What if he's really not? You know, I can't be like, hey, this one's for Cowboy Carl. <laughs> I, <get> <laughs> <in the> <laughs> I think he would have lost his mind. He would have lied. But luckily, I think he luckily, uh, I go over there and I'm looking at him, and he's looking at other whiskeys. I think he'd been drinking, you know, whiskey neat. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I guess I'm gonna do Cap Cowboy Carl. And he goes, ah, oh, you know what? I think we're good. Thanks, Dino. And I was like, oh, yeah. so, oh. So I didn't get punched in the head. <laughs> That's really fun. I did it. He asked me to do this scene for him uh, right around that time. I want to say it was like either 95, 96. He films. It was his film. And he's like, I want He goes, you're really physical. That's what he said. I want you to do. And we had, a, I was, a, I couldn't tell you what this movie is, but it's, it's definitely one of Fishburne's first movies and i was the pizza guy so i was i was and someone pissed me off or they didn't pay or i said something to him and then the guy grabs me and then pulls me over the counter and like starts beating me up so and you got beat like, up 
by Lawrence. Yes, and I was Lawrence. like, this is going to be the greatest. I'm going to be so good at getting beat yeah. up that I'm going to have a 10 picture deal after right. this. This is, this is going to launch me into the $100 million zone. Like, yeah, I'm going to be every Lawrence fish, right? I never heard Once from in the life. Oh, Mike knows it, too. We got to find the scene. We'll do it for post. Once right. in a life. Yes. <laughs> I am the pizza guy in Once in a Life. There Good go. job, Mike. Wow. Good Dude, job. You can take a punt. Good job, Mike. <laughs> thank you. Thank I, you. I, you know what I think about, though, man? I Because, you know, after hanging out, all of us, you know, two weeks ago in Austin, I started thinking about if you, Jim, and Dino, if you guys would have met up in the city back in the day i i'm surprised like you know dino did you ever go to any of the old snl like part after parties with anybody because i still can't believe the two of you didn't run into each other at you some know point. it just seems like it was after you left the cast though for a while a lot of the cast would come down to the bar um that uh what was uh chris Catan would come down and uh different people because I think some of the guys who owned the bar went up to to the show and then told the cast to come down. And it was kind of a cool rock and roll bar down in East Village, so a lot of people would come down there. But I I think it was after you'd left the show by then. It was getting into yeah. the nineties, so yeah. We, well, I gotta say, like, yeah. yeah, not not a lot of us really hung out too. After like we do the after parties, we would go to wherever the they'd bring us. But I think I only went. We went out drinking one time. It was me, Will Ferrell, Chris Kattan. Um, maybe Molly Shannon or whatever. No, all I remember is we started walking down the street. We we went to some bar. We had a couple beers. It was the first time we kind of hung out together, and we started. We found these boxes, and we started throwing these boxes all over the place and kicking them. And then we went. This should be a sketch where we're the bellmen, and we just pretended we were bellmen. <laughs> Here's your package, and we were throwing it against the wall. And we get me and him would giggle, and then we actually end up doing it. And um, yeah, but we never really hung out. Uh, a whole. I, th- I think that's the only time we really hung out in a bar or anything like that. So, uh, anyway, hey Joe, your your connection really sucks. So I'm gonna let you go. All right, let me go, bro. I'll see you guys later. See you tomorrow in Atlanta, Jim Dino. Oh, later, later, bro. Later. <laughs> okay, so so Dino, now you're in the uh, this story too. You're in what was what was the name of the clown? What the clown? Uh, what we were in clowns for progress. Clowns for Progress. Can you still get them? Can you still listen oh, yeah. to Clowns for Progress? Oh, yeah, yeah. We did a couple records. We had a couple. We had an indie deal, and we toured a lot. We toured tons. We did a video. We shot a video in New York City, which was kind of funny because the guy from uh, our buddies were in Space Hog, which you'd remember the song, that song that went. Remember that 90s song? That... Yes. Yeah, you might remember. You'd know it if you heard it. <laughs> but uh, they were f- crazy too and the, the guy ant in the in the van shot a video for us and this was like pre 9 11 he just got a steak bed and we went to times square and just gorilla shot a video right and oh, we wow. were just okay. running in the street and every time we saw a cop we would just stop and act like we were like yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah we you know we did a lot of stuff you know we get we had a little a little moment here and there we toured with a lot of great bands so as uh, like with who Anyone, anyone like we toured with the boss tones, uh, quite a oh, wow. bunch of times. And in fact, that was one time I said that to Nate, um, Albert, the, the guitar player, he came in the bar. After, I hadn't seen him in a while. And I said to him, oh man, I wish, you know, we didn't, cause we went out with them when they had a number one. And I said, man, I wish that, you know, cause our band had broke up. What? Yeah. Knock, on knock on wood, knock on wood, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 knock on wood. They were yeah. great. They were, and they're they were, great they dudes. Were. Great guys took care of their openers. Just great guys to tour with. And, uh, and I said to him, man, I wish we'd have had a shot and, you know, got, and he goes, dude, same stage as us. Number one hit, same crowds, just 45 minutes earlier. You made it bro. And it was like a great perspective, you know, because it's like, yep. yeah, we did. We, you know, we had a great time. Just played sold out shows with them. Um, played with a lot of good bands in the nineties. That uh, you you were uh, and so are you in a tour bus at this time, or are you? Oh no, no, we had a van. Vans, like, we had a van, van that we bought from this elderly couple where you could stand up in it. One of those, and it had a, a <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could. Yeah. Stand, they had a yes. toilet in it when we got it. We ripped the toilet, <laughs> but uh, it was cool because you could stand up and it had cupboards which was pretty funny because um, 
the dr- my drummer Johnny, the, the guy in the bit, he owned a bar, so we stocked it with booze, and we didn't even know when we toured with the Boss Town, the Boss Towns, they played all these colleges, and I didn't know that colleges were dry. Like you know, when, last time I was in college, you know, in 1990, it was party town. There was no booze. So oh, wow. we, we had like this mobile bar. So we would tell the kids and we would have these parties in the van. <laughs> like in park. Meet us by the van after the show. We're yeah, all gonna was- get wasted. <laughs> 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 Tino, what do you want? What do you need? Look, Martini, got you wow. It was totally like yeah. that. Yeah, and it got to where, you know, the every day I'd get in the van to drive, and one of the boss tones would be riding shotgun. You know, like Dickie'd be like, I'm riding with you guys, you know. <laughs> they, they'd had enough of each other. <laughs> they'd ride with us and uh Yeah, but what made me laugh though was like you're saying people don't even realize that too. All right. So you're out there trying to make it as a band and the, the mighty boss stones that they have a tour bus, right? Oh, yeah. They have the tour oh, yeah. bus. They have the number one hit. They're all back. So you're following around the van and you were saying, you were telling us you, you didn't really have money for to no. sleep in hotels oh, and all no, that. No, no, Dude, we had to so fan you out. Me- we would fan out like, all right, find some place to stay, find some chicks who let us stay at the house, find anybody. <laughs> And it would like we'd come back and check in, and you'd be like, "I don't know, I got a guy. He says he'll take two of us, but he ain't gonna take the whole thing." <laughs> and it was just, and uh, <laughs> one, then one of the oh, night, we told you the story about us having to sleep. Me and Johnny having to sleep in the van. Yeah, I want to hear this one. Yeah, I want to hear this one. Fun. You know, because our guitar, our, our bass player Larue, he was a very shy guy. He was kind of like the Woody Allen dude in the band. And uh, okay, when he went out on the road, though, he became like a monster. Right, he's this quiet, like you know dude in the city and now he's this rock star and he's hook he hooks up with this girl in richmond and richmond had just had a snowstorm and they never get snowstorms it's like we just started okay. our tour we're like two days in we're down in richmond our guitar player who's a this god he's he hooks up with two chicks and leaves us he's like i'll meet you guys right. in the morning and so me and johnny are gonna stay yeah. with larue and this this chick he's hooked up with and so we get back to their house and he's like hey bro um She's in a studio apartment and we're like, and it's cold and it's freezing out. We're like, we, we don't right. care. We'll just sleep on the floor. And he goes, oh, dude, I really got to like, okay, bro. We, we'll sleep in the van. Okay. We'll sleep in the van. And uh, so you can, you know, have your time. So we get down in the van and the van's parked illegally. We don't know that it's a snowstorm. So right. we're huddling together. Johnny and I are now. Were you drinking that night? You guys, you came off the stage. You got your <laughs> clown outfits on. No, there's, I was. You- I wasn't drinking, but uh, you know the other guys were drinking. You know, I was always okay. a sober guy. But uh, okay, but um, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty much. And I, I mean, I've con- I've gone in and out a little bit. You know, dabbled here and there. But for the most part, I've been because I noticed when we when we were all hanging out, you were not you you don't drink. Yeah, you no, no. I, yeah, I, I met sober. my quota. You know what I mean? In the nineties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I met my quota to the other night. It's another whole story. Uh, uh, but go ahead. But yeah, no, we just, you know, we had to huddle together. We, you know, we're, and we're sweaty from performing. We haven't showered. We still have clown makeup on. We're stripped down to our boxers, hugging in a sleeping bag. We're in a sleeping bag, hugging, trying to stay warm. You guys. We're, bro- we're bros. We're bros, Jim. Are you back to back? <laughs> are you back to back? Or are you spooning? Oh, we're, I, I don't even remember. We're just so freaking cold. And then okay. like all of a sudden, like four o'clock in the morning, I hear like, gong, 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 gong. Something's going on with the van. Somebody, they're lifting it up. They're towing it. So I jump out of the van and I run out to the guy. I'm like, yo, that had dropped the van, right? And the guy just is <laughs> a clown in boxers. <laughs> and then right behind me is his little buddy. His buddy comes out. <laughs> and they're both two little clowns. He's like, you know, I was saying to you, somewhere there's a guy telling that story. <laughs> Oh, but, I've uh, seen it all. Yeah, but he was, was, yeah, he was like, I, no, no, I'll drop it. I'll drop it. I was like, drop the van right now. <laughs> it's like our life yeah, was in it, you know. <laughs> I'll say right now, it's 4.35 in the morning, New York City, and I'm getting ready to tow, and I'm just trying to get by, and two guys come out in clown outfits, in yeah. boxer shorts, at 20 degrees. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. He dropped it. He got out. <laughs> 
I don't need the money tonight. It's all good. I'll I'll, I'll do the paperwork. Holy yeah. crap! But I used to pull I used to pull that stuff all the time. I I got pulled over once in Texas, um, and this guy was like, "He's speeding and blah 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 blah." And he's like, "Can I look in the van?" And I was like, "Absolutely." And I go to the back, and I open the doors, and I open the merch because I'm going to show him the merch because we had a comic book too. I should have gave okay. you. I still have a comic book. I should have gave it to you. I show him the comic book, and he's like. What is this? And I said, we dress up like clowns. And I go, for the kids, man. It's, it's wholesome. <laughs> and he goes, really? He, he was like, that's all right, man. That's all right. I was like, we don't drink. We don't promote drugs. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all this stuff. He's like, well, that's all right. And he said, I'm going to let you go. And I said, will you pose for a picture with us? And he posed for a picture. <laughs> Maniac. Yeah. The clown thing. Now, how was it? Sometimes yeah. it how long does that last? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long does this last? Couple of years. Yeah. When do you about, give it up? About five years. Do, do you know when up. are you done? Huh? Yeah, but when because the guys get married, like, come on, man, we got to rehearse. Like, yeah, ah, the bottom line is, if you're not making money, if if you know, it's like anything. If you we we had an indie deal, but if you're not making money, every time we go on tour, it was like, hey, save money to pay rent, right. and you know, it's, right? It was like right. a boat. You know, it was a touring was like a boat, <laughs> you know, you just throw money at it, throw money at it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, um, yes. But it's good. So now you, good time. It was good times. Yeah. Uh, so now you're done with that. And where you, what's the next adventure for Dino? Well, I stayed, I stayed around in New York city for a while and then I moved out to Austin. You know, it was just a good time. Everybody's telling me it was like, it was during the subprime lending. <laughs> They're giving houses away down here. <laughs> And I was at, I was actually the subprime lending success story because, you know, you'd go in and just stated income. They were, you know, oh, you're approved for half a million dollars. I was like, I don't want half a million dollars. I want a hundred thousand dollar house. You know, they were, you, you could come in and I was telling people in New York City, I bought a house down here for thirty two hundred dollars. I had to pay closing costs. That was it. They were just they were just giving money away. They were just, you know, they were it was a, it was a big what year is that? What year is that? Five oh five. Oh my God! Oh, you yeah. go to Austin, Texas for yeah. nothing. Yeah, it was nothing. It was no move, and 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 it just blew up. And and then a few years later, I met Sarah, and I just decided, you know, I sold that house and went out to the. We started doing the farm and the bees and the yeah. wildlife management. <clears throat> yeah, what I loved was um, Dino. <clears throat> you're you're pretty much doing what I'm dying to do, but I don't know how. I, I I'm still lazy. <laughs> or I don't want to do it where you got your own food, uh -huh. you're growing your own stuff. You don't have farm animals, right? right? There's no chickens or anything like no, that. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I, chickens are tough. Yeah. Chicken seat. Then you can't go anywhere. I'd rather pay $6 a dozen and support those guys with the chicken. <laughs> I don't want the chickens. <laughs> you can always go across the street. They got yeah. chickens over there. Hey, Gar, I got your chicken. Yeah, exactly. I don't want the chicken. So what, how do you get into the stuff that you're doing now? Like you're so, my daughter's crazy with the kabucha. Am I saying that right? Kombucha. 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 Ab, abucha? No, kombucha. Like communication. Com kombucha. Like comrade. Kombucha. Kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> kombucha. Yeah. And I go in there and you're showing me how you make all this stuff on your own. Right. And, and so, I, I, but how does that even, how do you, how does that happen? Is that your wife is, is she's real? You is, know, when I met her, she was in the film biz already. She works for Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez. And she does, she runs a, his prop fabrication department. So she, you know, she's a sculptor and she makes weapons and she does all kinds of cool stuff. And in fact, when I started dating her, she was like between films and she's like, I'm going back to work. And if you want to see me, you might as well come and work with me. Uh, because there's, you know, I work 12 hour days. And I was yeah. sick and tired of, do I was doing graphic design and editing video like Mikey. I had, I was like Mikey, you know, and I was sitting in front okay. of the computer and it was fun for a long time. And then I was like, man, I'm super into this. And so yeah, started working on some shows with her. And then somebody said to me, asked me about going over to set deck, set, you know, set dressing. And that's, yeah. I've really, and I've been there for a while and I really like that. Cause you do a, you know, you dress the sets, you come in, you take the notes from the art department and you boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You do a little electricity, you do a little carpentry, a little interior decorating, and you just make these rooms happen. And I would probably say that was uh, the thing that really enabled me to be able to build what you saw because yeah. it really demystified 
process, you start to understand you just do one little thing. Just do this thing next. Frame the walls. Don't worry about Then we get to the roof. Then you do the electric. Then you, you know what I mean? And it's nothing yeah. is daunting because I was doing it on a daily basis. We'd go into a place and we'd flip a place. And so right. it really just sort of enabled me to do that. And then, you know, like the kombucha, for instance, I'd never yeah. had it six years ago. And I had some, and I was like, man, I love this. I love it. But it's really expensive. It was like $12 a gallon. And I was like, how do you yeah. make it? First thing I said, how do you make it? Let's make it. I'll make my own and it'll be better. And it is. What? So you planted, you you planted fruit trees and like how, how, how does so that, what do you that. mean? Made? I thought you were gonna say so you planted little kombuchas. We planted little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, we, you know, my wife is a big green thumb. You know, she's East Texas girl, and she loves planting and loves gardening. And you know, um, she'd already had a bunch of fruit trees going. So by the time I started doing kombucha. I was already saying to myself, what am I going to do that's different? And for people who don't know, kombucha is like a sweet tea. Chinese have been making it for thousands of years. It ferments, it eats all the sugar, and you, you end up with this really great probiotic drink that's just good for you, tastes kind of good, a little sour, a little sweet. I give it a second fermentation. Most people just ferment it uh, the first time. I drop it down into those smaller tanks you saw, and then I add fruit juice, and I let it ferment a little longer. So it gives it a little more of a, it's just a little more palatable. It takes away some of that vinegary taste that uh, people don't like about it. So can I ask something which I didn't ask you there? I didn't, I didn't, first of all, I finally just for the first time ever realized what that stuff is. Like I didn't know what kombucha was. Right, I, right. My, my daughter praises it. Do you sell your own homemade stuff? I don't know if you do, yeah. um, but I see you make it. I didn't know if it was just for well, you. We or you actually store. Sell it. it really is for me. And I've got it on tap and, <clears throat> and we sell it at events and stuff like that. Um, and you know, people will say to me, Oh man, you should bottle it up. And it's like, well, that's a full-time job, bro. That's now I'm bottling it up. I got to get a, a van. I got to drive it around. It's like, I sell it out of the store and I sell about as much as I can make. So it works out good. You know, it's, I, like it. I have my hands in a lot of, you know, a lot of irons. Uh, so you don't, you don't have a, Dino, you don't have a desire to, to be this whole big manufacturing thing of what you're doing over there at the place really it's, just it's self-sufficient friends da 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 and you keep building more cabins on your own i just it was one of the coolest i felt like for a guy i felt like we we're at the coolest fort in the world right. like when we were kids <laughs> and we were kids we're like we're gonna build a fort and we're gonna have a stage there's gonna be lights and there's gonna be a hangout and, right. and this fire pit and one cabin's gonna be there and then you gotta go upstairs and then there's a tavern right and it was that's the <laughs> feeling it was one of the coolest hangouts ever but you don't have a desire to make this some type of big thing this is more just a personal your no, set I money I, I want to but okay. at the same time i don't i'm not interested in just like you know partnering with some corporation and blowing it up i i like i love the pace that i'm going at i want a few more cabins yeah i like doing more yeah. events i would like to do some music festivals smaller things mm -hmm. music performances maybe comedy you know, thing like you were talking about, maybe coming out and doing a small, intimate, uh, you know, idea for that. Yeah, but what, what, where would you do it in that in that area where we were? Because yeah. you have trees there. Are they going to be like? What, what do you, They're going to have stand in the trees, Jim. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, well yeah. we should do some. Uh -huh. We should plan something. Um, let's let let's let's get together and really plan something. I'm not really. I would love to do maybe. Well. well We'll, we'll, we'll brainstorm whether it's like a musical yeah. thing with, um, storytelling, sure. um, something I, we, it, there, it's definitely a fun event. It doesn't have yeah, to yeah. be this big, crazy ah, thing. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it could be totally invite only. Right. Maybe, you know, I have Patreon members. Maybe I invite just the Patreon members, the VIP Patreon members, whatever that may be. Uh, there may be something really cool for here. So right, right. let's, let's, let's work on that. And when, yeah. when I think you said m between March and, and, uh, like maybe May is a good time in Austin looking, or it doesn't really, get too hot. It, well, the sweet spot I think is May cause it just looks May. beautiful out there and it's not super hot yet. Um, 
But, but yeah, you know, you really hit it because um, I think what I really like doing is I like having something, I like making something that somebody hasn't done already, or, or at least try to make a variation on the theme. It's like, I don't, right now we're doing a lot of workshops. We do beekeeping workshops and, and different sorts of things. My wife has a big group of women she's involved with this dance class and, and people end up staying out there. And it's a really cool sort of, it's like, you can't put your finger on it. You know, you, you come out for a workshop, but then it ends up around a bonfire with some cocktails and it's a different experience than everywhere else. And I'm just happy that it landed that way. You know, it's like, I, you know, cause people used to say to me all the time, oh, you need it to be like, uh, uh, there's a place out in uh, West Texas, like, you know, sure. blah, 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 foo, foo fest yeah. and Kyle McCartney. Yes. Everybody's in yeah. airstreams and they're, you know, they're, they got cool haircuts and it's like, I don't care about all that, you know? Yeah. No, 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 no. You, you just nailed it. It's, it's, it's unexplainable. You go, it, it, it really is unexplainable. I don't know how to explain it. It's just a, it's a whole different feeling. It's a whole different mood. It's a, it, it's, it's really cool. Un unfortunately, we didn't expect that crazy cold. Right. Not, nobody expected that yeah. cold to come, <laughs> come storming yeah. in and wrecking uh, Texas for a couple of days. So yeah. we'll, we'll get together and we'll try to figure out maybe May would be a good time. That'd be great. My, great to have my you daughter on. graduates the end of May. So maybe sometime in the middle of May or something like that, if that's cool with you. Yeah, it'd be fun. Where does if if anyone wants to buy something from the store, which by the way we beat the snot out of those candy pecans, yeah, they were destroyed so them. So freaking Bush good. Can, <laughs> can can people order that online? Where you do know, they go? You can go to Crown Fox Not really. Studios. But for the most part, we like to keep it right. You got to You you get it out there. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. You can buy everything yeah, yeah, online. Yeah. It's like come yeah. on out. You got to come out. You get the t shirts there. You get the pecans. All right. There. Cool. Cause you know, everything's kind of small batch, you know, she'll do a batch of 25 yep. bags. She tells people, people in Austin, just drive out and get them. And you know, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just, cool. kind of a, you know, folks. Cool. Like well, brother, I, I, I tell you what, I know people won't understand. That was the fact that you don't drink the fact that you're sober. I, that was one of the <laughs> hardest well, I think I was we hanging. Going. We got go. We were feeding. We got friends. We were. Uh, the, you're right. It was like a shark feeding frenzy, and we just throw one log into the situation, and you would take off like a. And you, would, I mean, I was, I was over the railing twice. Yeah. Oh, trying we were, to oh, gasp. We were grabbing our oh. all of us. We were, you know. Oh my God. I was in so much pain from laughing so hard. And that that those are great moments in lifetime. And I've done the podcast before where I say, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You sell out here and there's a standing ovation there. And I met this celebrity and I hung out with that rock star. That is a moment, that whole experience is is goes down as one big smile and one big giggle and uh you're part of that i'm not sure i ever laughed so hard in my damn life and i and i, I just want to uh reiterate that with you and i hope to see you again in may do you know yeah brother yeah uh, all right man stay out of trouble and this is in the honor <laughs> of Dermot egan people don't <laughs> even know what we're doing with that. that's a whole nother thing <laughs> That's another whole thing. That's Let them show. stay in the shadows in the dark. They're not going to yeah. know. <laughs> Dino, give your wife much love. Tell her uh, we all miss Sarah, man. Have a good one, brother. All right. I love you, Jimbo. See ya. Love you too, brother. Dino Jones, perhaps one of the hardest I've ever laughed. Mike, how hard? You were howling. I never saw you laugh that hard, Mike. I never saw you laugh that hard. Than when it we was, were at it, he's very animated and he, he gets into the stories. I mean, like, like I said on the last episode, you know, we 10 days later, we're still, you know, yeah. quoting him and bringing up. It, it's just, it was just too fun. It's too much. Yeah. Fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. All right, everyone don't go anywhere. Uh, hanging out here on the Bruniverse. I didn't know if you, if you knew, if you wanted me to stay or something for any reason. <laughs> <laughs> if oh, like, you want to hear something crazy? Close the browser. What an <laughs> dude! You want to hear something crazy? You know how I kept telling. Remember when you were doing the whole Irish thing, and you, know, you know, and I said I started telling you about the dear Merdigan. Right, right. I haven't heard when I tell you years. 
and I mean years, uh, the next night when we were in Corpus Christi, I get a text. I think I, I think I erased it. <laughs> Hold on. From that dude? <laughs> on my life, dear Medigan, text me at the Corpus Christi show and it has me in the background and it's him making a big face at the camera. And I went, what? <laughs> like, were you listening to me and D? Like, what it, it, it completely threw me off. First of uh, all, it was so obscure that it brought his name up. Right. And, and, and then uh, I go, where are you? He goes, oh, I'm in Las Vegas and we're at the Venetian. And I guess you're playing here. It has your sign in the background. And we figured we'd take a selfie. And, and I literally, he showed me his wife. His I haven't seen his wife in 25, 30 years. I haven't wow. seen Dearman Egan in 25, 30 years. And we're laughing our asses off. And we're talking about Irish. You were talking about the, dude, you told some crazy, funny <laughs> Irish stories, those crazy guys with the guy that got in a fight and he stuck the thing up the guy's nose, he's ripping up and biting the guy's nose off. Oh, and right, I, right. And we forgot I forgot all about that. And no, I know. Um, and that's how I was like, Dear Mid Egan. Like I was smart coming up with a name, but I actually knew it, Dear Mid Egan. But man, yeah, I thought that was such a small world that he actually texted me. It was nuts so. All right. That's good. Have a good one, Ombre. Take care. Dino all Jones, right. everybody. <laughs> Dino Jones. <laughs> I'm glad you tuned in. Make sure you check out some tour dates. Go to jimbrewer.com. I'll be performing. Got a bunch of tours coming up. Jimbrewer.com. Hit tour. See where I'm playing. I'd love to see you at the local places. I hope you enjoy the pictures and some of the videos I'm going to show here. I wish you the best. Thank you, Mike, for hanging out. And we'll see you next time on the Bruniverse. Have a good one, everyone. Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week, and I have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there.